Andrew McGahan for Severe MMA here in the Gibson Hotel ahead of UFC in October. Standing alongside Ashing Daly and Ashing, one of the most recent additions to the card. Um, I was talking today with Sean Sheehan, Erica, Al uh, Erica Almeida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two submission grapplers. Um, your last couple of fights, we saw it in your earlier career, how you always had the submission, the grappling advantage. Do you think this is a fight that brings you back to your roots? Do you think you're going to get an opponent who's going to bring that sort of game plan? Uh, yeah, I think she'll be very happy to, to grapple. Uh, if anybody saw her last fight against Juliana Lima, she spent three rounds kind of on her back fishing for arm bars and stuff. So, so that'll suit me down to the ground. I think it's going to be kind of a, an old school Ash the Bash performance. I know she's a BJJ black belt, but um, I'm a BJJ brown belt and I'm an SPG brown belt, so so they're pretty special. And not only that, I'm well used to training with with high level high girls too. You know, uh, some of the training partners I get to train with in SPG HQ in Portland, I have girls like Amanda Diggins and Leah Taylor. You know, two very high level black belt girls. You know, uh, both recently competed over the weekend and, and both won gold medals in the Santa Cruz Open and the Atlanta Open. So uh, these are girls I get to train with quite often. So. A uh, female BJJ black belt is going to be no surprise to me. She's not going to have any any tricks that I haven't seen. From that, just the last thing about women, I notice on Facebook every couple of weeks a ladies-only open mat down in HQ. You seem to be the one leading that. This is just for any lady um, who wants to get interested in martial arts, come down, try it. Uh, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I'm just really trying to get involved in in kind of getting girls into the sport. You know, for for many years I've been training, and especially over the last while, I guess with myself and Ronda Rousey and obviously Connor's success, I'm getting a lot of interest in girls who want to train, and they're saying things to me like, "Oh, um, I have no experience," or "Oh, I don't really want to train with the guys just starting off." So. Uh, Basically, it's free to everybody. Um, I, I think the next date um, is maybe the 12th of September. I have a Facebook event for it. It's a public event. Anybody can go to it. So 12 to 2 on, on Saturday, September 12th. And just come down and, and just have a, a role. You know, I'll, I'll be the one coaching the class. Um, last time I had 26 girls on the mat, eight of which had only trained a little bit before. So that was 18 girls who had never... First time. First timers, 18 first timers on the mat. And everybody had a great day. And like I said, it's going to be once a month from now on. And um, once a week now is a ladies only jiu-jitsu class in SBG. And I'm co coaching that as well. And um, I just want to get more girls involved. And I really have a, a love and a passion for BJJ. And when people talk to me about it and say oh well what do you think you'll do when you retire and, and Jiu Jitsu is definitely one of those things that I want to get more involved in coaching and, and just yeah. bringing, bringing the sport on so um, what did you think about Gabby Garcia at the weekend um, bit of an upset yeah it was a little bit of an upset but uh, I, I honestly I just think she has such an unfair advantage in that in that division you know somebody who because it's under 60 or over 60 yeah, she is most definitely over 60 well she's uh, she's almost twice as much as a 60 you know uh, I think she weighed in at 118 kilos for 180cc so over 60 to 118 kilos is a, a, an absolute massive difference so uh, yeah I think it's fantastic that she she didn't win I think it's it's nice to get some other girls getting some success and it keeps people more interested uh, I guess it's like anything if somebody is constantly just walking through everybody then people lose interest in watching it so it's just it's nice to to see somebody else having a bit of success and I know there's prize money and stuff for ADCC so uh, yeah it's nice to spread. see someone else get it yeah definitely yeah. yeah if you're looking as well it was announced the other day that the um, I think it was Aoife Murphy on Facebook was putting a big thing out the IMAF European Championships there's now they've added more weight divisions for girls um, I know Sinead had excellent success in Las Vegas do you think this is going to encourage more girls even towards competing? Because from an early level, from an early ability level, these girls have been offered the chance to compete at stuff like the European Championships and the World Championships as amateurs. I definitely think it will it, it encourage more girls to get involved. Definitely the, the amateur scene has grown and the IMAF is a great way to do it because you're guaranteed a certain amount of fights in a short space of time. You know, if you're not guaranteed a fight, then you don't even have to show up but um, it, it's fantastic that you can get so many fights on the, the same place and the fact that it's an amateur event and the same day weigh-in it cuts out all that messing with people cutting weight excessively and that kind of thing I think certain problems will still be there you know especially for the girls um, at the higher weight classes like to hard be, to get matched yeah to be very honest there's just not many girls out there that exist at that size especially in Ireland when you think about the average size of a female being five foot four in height and, and maybe weighing 65 kilos or something like that that's it's it's very big to be 155 you know I guess more places in Europe I know 
like uh, Holland and Denmark and the Scandinavian countries where the, the average height of the female tends to be a lot more so you'll get bigger bigger girls competing but um, it, at least it's helping you know I, I know they've added the weight classes but I know the weight classes are added due to demand, demand yeah. so if, there, if still nobody shows up you know if you're the only girl in that weight class or whatever you're not going to you're not going to get matchups, but um, hopefully it encourages more girls to get involved and it, it grows the scene, and especially for the bigger girls to get matchups. And the smaller girls have the exact same problem, to be honest, you know, because there's not many uh, 48 kilo girls walking around, so, th- so those girls have trouble getting matchups too. But anything that gives uh, the girls an opportunity to compete is very helpful. And um, I think things like even the, the ladies' only sparring days and stuff like that, I went over to a really good one in uh, gym 01 in the UK and uh, they had a really good turnout and I got some good spars in there and I tried kind of setting up one here and I made a Facebook event for it and I got a really bad response on it just like I guess halfway between it being a bad weekend for people and then people not really baby steps baby steps exactly yeah we're, we're, we're kind of we tend to be a little bit behind the UK with most things so maybe next year it'll be a good opportunity to get one of those sparring days together but I'll keep trying because like I said uh, I'm not I'm not just about me and the sport, you know what I mean? I, I realise there's a future to come and there's a next generation and I'm not getting any younger. And Although I'm only 27, you know, uh, it's not exactly how old you are, it's how many miles on the clock. So, um, you know, there'll be a time when I have to retire and, and I want to see everybody do well. I want to see the next generation coming up. and Setting the platform for those coming before exactly, you. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I want to see a few Irish girls in the, in the UFC weight classes, not just, not just me. Lovely. Ashing, thank you very much. Best luck in your fight. Thanks very much.